the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. Grandpa! No, be careful! Grandpa, stop! spend the day at Miss Smiley's cafe. It was a special event, which was why we were both going dressed like this. Oh. Well, you look marvellous, but I hope someone's going to teach you to roar louder than that. Once more, please, pirate pupils. <laughs> yes, today we were going to be pupils at the Sunny Sand School for Pirates. I'm surprised Miss Smiley is running a pirate school. She's not fierce enough to be a pirate teacher, is she? Mm. She's much too smiley. Um, Miss Smiley's not the teacher, Grandpa. She's asked a friend to help. Not Horatio Heave Ho. Horatio Heave Ho has the beach hut next to ours. He works in a bank, but what he really wants to do is be a pirate. Who's a pretty boy, then? He loves putting on pirate clothes and digging for treasure. But most of all, he loves roaring. Yo ho, heave ho, Horatio! Heave ho, Horatio! Just then, the doorbell rang. That must be Miss Smiley. But it wasn't Miss Smiley. It was Floyd. Yes, it was Floyd. Heave ho, me hearties! Miss Smiley be waiting for you outside in her car. Floyd, I didn't know you wanted to learn how to be a pirate. I don't. I'm just going along to scare Horatio. Well, see you later, Grandpa. Don't get up to any mischief while we're out. Oh, I think I'll just have a little lie down. Have a good time. I knew what Grandpa was thinking. If Floyd scares Horatio, then the pirate school will be a disaster. We've got to go and stop them, Jason. And there's only one way I can go to the pirate school, and that is if I'm small. Not a shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He can get into my car and make it go. He can chuff about the room in my Sunny Sands train. He can fly in my toy plane. Or he can just run around for all he's worth. I'm the only one who knows about Grandpa's magic shrinking cap. And nobody else is supposed to find out. I couldn't see Grandpa anywhere. I had to go without him. But I knew he'd find his own way to get to pirate school. On Gordon, my toy seagull. Grandpa took off, flew up the stairs and out of my bedroom window. Miss Smiley had done a fantastic job of turning the cafe into a pirate school. There were nets and flags and a fish tank and all kinds of pirate food. A treasure chest made from a loaf of bread, potato sailing boats, shark infested jelly, and a mermaid cake. And then our teacher arrived. Horatio, heave ho! Yo ho ho, heave ho! Everyone was so busy cheering Horatio, heave ho, that nobody saw Grandpa running into the cafe or climbing up the table leg or hiding behind the treasure chest loaf. Welcome, young ruffians, to the Sunny Sand School for Pirates. I'm your teacher, Horatio Heave Ho, and this is my assistant, Stinky. <laughs> but perhaps you could teach them a piratey song. I don't know many piratey songs. I keep forgetting the words. Well, I know a piratey song. Ah. How does a proper pirate go? He stamps his foot and he shouts, heave ho! He hoists the sail of his pirate ship and goes on a treasure hunting trip. 
He lands on an island far away and digs and digs and digs all day. When he finds gold, how does he go? Yo ho ho! Yo ho ho! Yes, I've got it. Sing your hearts on me, Hardy. Even Grandpa was roaring his heart out. But Floyd had other ideas. While we were singing our hearts out, Floyd sneaked off and picked up this, a plastic crab. Floyd chased Horatio round and round the food table. Any moment, one of them was going to spot Grandpa. Make them stop, Miss Riley. I'm scared of crabs. I keep thinking they're going to net me somewhere nasty. Floyd, you put that crab back where you found it, please. Oh, it's pathetic. It's only plastic. I think it's time for a piratey picnic. Yeah. Grandpa had to get out of the way. He jumped down and hid under the table. I was pleased to see that Grandpa had escaped. Floyd had taken the mermaid off the cake. It's not very piratey, this food, is it? I mean, why have we got a mermaid cake? Mermaids have nothing to do with pirates. Floyd, put that back. At least you can't scare Horatio with a plastic mermaid. Oh. But Floyd was determined to scare Horatio with something else. Well, everyone was helping themselves to the pirate picnic. Floyd sneaked off to the dressing up box. He thought nobody was watching him, but he was wrong. What's that boy up to now? Miss Smiley went to get chocolate sundaes, and Horatio said, And while we're waiting for the sundaes, I'll tell you all some pirate stories. Now sit down and gather round. So we all gathered round. Boris Blackbeard. All of us except Floyd. It was the wildest pirate that ever sailed the seven seas. He had a roar that, that could scare the life out of a giant. Roar! Ah, it's him! It's Boris Blackbeard, the bragging buccaneer! <laughs> of course, everybody else knew it wasn't really Boris Blackbeard, the bragging buccaneer. It was Floyd. Horatio ran off and hid in the store cupboard. Floyd! You're spoiling all the fun and you've upset Horatio. I'm telling Miss Smiley. Yeah, me too. And me. This was a disaster. I was looking around for Grandpa, but I couldn't see him anywhere. And then I saw these. Grandpa had taken his clothes off and was running around pirate school in his pants. He was definitely up to something. I decided to hide so I could see what that something was. Floyd was making for the food when somebody waved at him. This time, Grandpa had gone too far. He was sitting in the fish tank, dressed as a mermaid. Ah! She waved at me! Miss Smiley, you've got to come! There's a real-life mermaid in the fish tank! As soon as Floyd had gone, I ran to the fish tank and whipped the real live mermaid out. Oh, oh, thanks, Jason. Honestly, Grandpa. I didn't think I'd be able to hold my breath for much longer. But it's true, I promise. She's alive. Oh, no, Floyd's coming. I'll deal with him. You hide. Floyd went straight to the fish tank, but the mermaid wasn't there. Cooey, I'm over here. Ah! You can talk too? Who are you? I'm Melissa the Merry Mermaid, with eyes of turquoise blue, with golden hair and a flappy tail, and a special message for you. No more scaring, Horatio, please. No roaring and stamping your feet. Horatio may not be very brave, but he's ever so, ever so sweet. Horatio! Floyd rushed off to the store cupboard to find Horatio, and I came out of my hiding place. That was so funny, Grandpa. Oh, pass me a napkin, will you, Jason? So I promise from now on I'll be as good as gold. If I do one more thing wrong, you can make me walk the plank. It's a deal. Now please come and see the mermaid, please! While Floyd was saying sorry to Horatio, 
Grandpa took the mermaid costume off and got back into its normal clothes. I redressed the mermaid doll and put her back on the cake. Just in time, too. Horatio and Floyd were coming back. Not at all like you imagine. She's kind of funny and talks like this. I'm Melissa the Merry Mermaid with eyes of turquoise blue. Well, come on. She's on the cake. This is just a doll. <laughs> Full marks to you, Floyd. He tricked me right and proper, Miss Smiley. He, he, he tricked me. We'll make a pirate out of you yet, lad. Yo ho ho. Yeah, ho ho. Floyd was a bit confused, but Grandpa's job was done. When pirate school was over, Grandpa flew back on Gordon, and Miss Smiley brought us home. I ran into the house in front of Jemima just as Grandpa flew down the stairs. He whipped off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. Oh, he did it, Jason. It was a great power school, Grandpa, especially once Melissa the Merry Mermaid stopped Floyd messing about. But Melissa couldn't have done it without your help, Jason. <laughs> That's what I call teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Grandpa. We had such a good time. We learned masses about being a pirate, including this song. <clears throat> How does a proper pirate go? He stamps his foot and he shouts, Heave ho! <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, you know it already. Anyone would think you'd been to pirate school too. <laughs> <laughs> There we are, smooth as a billiard ball. Aftershave spray, please, master mate. He well kept Come, lads. Got me hat trimmed. All ready, Captain. How's that sword coming on, Pirate Barnabas? Nicely, thank you, Captain. Boots, Pirate William. <laughs> Shining like glass, Captain. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> I am ready then to go ashore for the Pirate of the Year contest, 1775. <laughs> That evening, the light shone brightly in the waterfront inn where the Pirate of the Year show was being held. Tom had to wait outside, but within, all was festivity and mirth. The captain was jubilant, for as it turned out, he was the only contestant, and the award was automatically his. Hardly surprising, really. <laughs> After all, it's obvious that I'm the bravest, most successful, and, of course, most handsome buccaneer afloat. <laughs> Here, here. Where are we? There was, I believe, some mention of that old ruffian, Cutthroat Jake. <laughs> but no doubt, he thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it therefore gives me great pleasure to accept this handsome... Oh, no, you don't! <gasps> You'll accept nothing of the kind, you old scallywag. Come on, out! All out, all of you! Except for you, Captain, and that crummy old crew of yarn. Draw your swords. We'll soon see who's Pirate of the Year. Come on, clear the bar. I ain't got all night. Not you. We must keep the numbers even, mustn't we? Or it wouldn't be fair, would it? Hmm. <laughs> 
I've got you where I want you. <laughs> now who's the pirate of the year? Eh? Which reminds me, there was some little matter of a prize, weren't there? Oh, yes, very handsome. <laughs> In the absence of all other competitors, I hereby proclaims myself Pirate of the Year. Stay where you are. Pirate of the Year, are you? Condemned out of your own mouth. Score! Oh. Arrest those men. No nonsense now. That's the way. Fall them in. And by the right. Quick march. And as Jake and his crew were marched off to the jailhouse, Captain Pugwash was even more pleased with himself than usual. After all, as he himself remarked, It's quite something to win the cup twice in ten minutes. <laughs> hey, my hearty? <laughs> Treasure map! Hooray! Hooray! The captain cried with glee. And straight away, without delay, the ship put out to sea. They sailed all day, they sailed all night, they sailed two thousand miles, until at last there came in sight that tropic treasure isle. They dashed ashore. We're here, we're here! Our fortune's ready made! Twas then the mate remarked, Oh dear, we never brought a spade. <laughs> This is too ridiculous. Treasure for the taking, and we haven't even got a toy trowel. He ain't grounds baked as hard as a rock cake. I knew I ought to have tied a knot in my anky. Maybe we could sail back home and fetch some tools. No time, Pirate Barnabas. I happen to know that Cutthroat Jake's after this lot, too. Uh, maybe you could find something to dig with on the island. Uh, off you go. So the mate and Barnabas and Willie set off into the jungly undergrowth to look for tools leaving Pugwash and Tom at the place where the treasure was buried six foot deep. I can't bear it, Tom. So near and yet... Listen! It's the crew. Maybe they've met Jake. <laughs> Maybe they've... Oh, help! Oh, help me! Oh, get away! They're, they're coming this way. Oh, yeah! Oh. Oh, oh, dear. oh, no. Oh, go away. Oh, oh. What happened? We, we was chased, Captain. By a huge wild beast, Captain. We great tusks and lumps and bumps, Captain. Here it comes. Oh, oh help, help. I help. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Mommy. Oh, so that's what it is. It's a warthog. <laughs> Be very careful, Tom. It's all right, Captain. Treat it properly and... Why, of course. I remember reading somewhere. Warthogs love digging holes. Love digging holes. Digging holes? Holes? Treasure! It started excav excavating. Oh, he is going fast. He'll be through to Australia in a minute. He must be nearly six foot down. He's done it! He's done it! Hooray! So the pirates carried the treasure chest in triumph back to their dinghy, while Tom made a fuss of the warthog and fed its special jungle roots as a reward. Very soon they were all back aboard the black pig, and the hog settled down to sleep it off in his cool, shady hole. Right, hoist the mainsail, weigh the anchor, and set course for home sweet home. Hey, Captain! You were right about cutthroat Jake. 
He's on the island. He's making for the place where the treasure was. He's looking into the hole. He doesn't look too pleased. <laughs> no treasure, eh? He's prodding into the hole. <laughs> Our friend isn't going to like that much. <laughs> and he doesn't. He's after him. <laughs> oh, this is Hooray! my lucky day. <laughs> Come on, Marty. Go on, get him, get him. He's chasing him to the water's edge. He's catching up with him. He's nearly there. He's got him.